if there is one thing that I've learned based on the research that I've done, and I could be wrong, but if there's one thing I've learned is that whenever a major institution or organization is formed, ironically around the same time as many other instances and events, and they focus on spirituality and enlightenment for all of humankind, we got a real problem based off of my research. Now, the first thing I want to jump into because there's just so much to cover here, has to do with something called the list of U.S. security clearance terms. Now, if we take a look at Wikipedia, what we're going to find is the traditional list of the U.S. security clearance terms. Now, what we do know is that, for example, when the president heads on over to Area 51, they're considered to be a VIP with restricted access to many different areas of classification in that building. Now, Phil Schneider. And I know I've mentioned him a bunch of times, especially lately, but he said this again. This is something else he brought up. It just keeps coming back. He keeps end up t- ending up telling the truth in a lot of instances from the speeches he made before he committed suicide. Mentioned a code name called Aquacade or Rylite. Now, according to globalsecurity.org, Rhyolite slash Aquacade was the next in a long series of Earth orbit CIA slash NSA slash Singent signals intelligence spacecraft used by the CIA and intelligence community for a variety of missions. They were launched by the stretched Atlas 3A, Agena D, and Titan 3B series boosters with a total of at least two launches, each of four successful launch attempts total. Now, the spacecraft were nothing more than CIA-specific sophisticated Earth orbit space-based Earth receiving stations operating over the entire emitted electromagnetic radial spectrum frequency range, end quote. Here's the thing. These are top secret satellites that are utilized to not only track UFOs, but to pay very close attention to the lead lines of the globe, or as some call lead lines. Now, What's ironic about all of this is that you're going to see it come full circle. So you might say, okay, what does this have to do with an ancient kill list? Now, if you've seen the film Wanted with James McAvoy or James McAvoy and Angelina Jolie, what you're going to find there is that Morgan Freeman's character is the gentleman who's in charge of the secret society organization that is responsible for killing and murdering certain people in order for there to be a peaceful society and timeline, and certain people need to be murdered in order for that to happen. Now you might say, okay, that's just a movie, right? Well, just bear with me here. The movies get it from somewhere. The writers get it from somewhere. There are implantations into people's subconsciousness that are slowly but surely but unequivocally coming up and reaching the surface now. So if you take a look, guys, at movies from 10, 15 years ago, a lot of what was done in those films are now being able to be done technologically. And they're saying this now. They're revealing it now. But they've had it for much, much longer than we have ever thought. Okay, so this secret ancient kill list is currently passed on from president to president. Now, you might say, okay, Dave, why would it be passed from president to president? If they don't have the top security clearance, well, the whole proposal behind this is that this secure this secret book of kill list is passed on from president to president and little journals and things are written about it inside of these kill lists. Why don't the presidents ever follow through on these kill lists or these targets? Well, I'll tell you why, because they're not the ones that make the decisions. The book is handed to them by CIA operatives that have the Aquacade and Rhyolite secret code clearance right? Classification clearance. My apologies. Now, the interesting thing is that no one knows exactly where this list came from, at least based on my research, I couldn't find it. However, it has been acknowledged. So for example, if we take a look at uh, insidesources.com, ex-CIA officer David Priest dishes about President's Book of Secrets. All right. So I'm just going to cite a quick quote here. There was no talk of when Priest gave a nominee book book talk Tuesday at the National Archives, but the author certainly kept his audience entertained. His work reveals hidden and often humorous insight into the president's daily briefing and secret books and sure to delight history buffs and political junkies alike. Okay, end quote. This is what's interesting about all of this. This is a book that is joked about. And this is a part of predictive programming and subliminal messaging. But this is a book that is joked about as presidents write their books when they're retired and when their term is up and things like this. However, it has been acknowledged. I mean, let's put it this way. Snopes.com, which is supposed to be like the standard of fact checkers, pretty much. Snopes.com 
even said themselves they cannot disprove this because allegedly there is a book of secrets that is handed from president to president. Now, one of the reasons why they're told to not carry out certain targets is because there are conflicting agendas around the world. So just bear with me here. I know this is a lot to take in, but only those with the Rylite and Aqua, Aquacade clearances can hand this book to the incoming and next president and tell them, okay, this is what you can do. This is what you can't do. Okay. Now, this is where it gets really interesting. This book is able to be read, allegedly able to be read by quantum computers. So who made an ancient book with codes that were able to be read by current modern day quantum computers? Well, what we have to do is take a step back and understand what the whole aspect of the universe and the very fabric of what our universe is made up of entails. It's been argued that we are living in a very advanced simulation, right? Now, if we are, if we are then able to develop quantum computational I guess we could say technologies that are able to understand the simulation of this world, which we've slowly been able to do, will notice something. There's a reoccurrence of mathematical patterns, specifically in nature, in things like trees, plants, flowers, many different things. And so it's not that hard for an advanced species to hand this book to world leaders or human leaders saying, listen, this is what will happen. It may not be entirely accurate, but this is what will happen over the next X amount of years. Could be a decade, could be a century, could be thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of years. But the point is, is that without oversimplifying, excuse me, if you can crack the code to, I guess we can call life, you can understand through the usage of quantum computational abilities that we as humans are just starting to learn now, probably with the help of some other advanced species as well, that we can accurately predict the major events that will occur in order for us to be able to deter them or in order for us to allow them to happen in order for there to be an overall, I guess we could say, encompassing and fluid timeline of maintaining and preserving human society. Now, there's a lot more to jump into. So the next thing I want to talk about here is something called the Lucis Trust. The Lucis Trust, according to them, the LucisTrust.org, and I quote, is, a de is dedicated to the establishment of a new and better way of life for everyone in the world based on the fulfillment of the divine plan for humanity. Its educational activities promote recognition and practice of the spiritual principles and values upon which a stable and interdependent world society may be based. The esoteric philosophy of its founder, Alice Bailey, informs its activities which are offered freely throughout the world in eight languages. End quote. Now, the Lucis Trust, this is big. Do you know what they were called before they changed their name in 1971? They were called the Lucifer Trust. You know why all this stuff kind of matters? And I say kind of as a joke. They were the original publishers and they were the people and organization that was responsible for forming the United Nations. All I have to say is this. Anytime an organization talks about spirituality, it scares me. Because who are they to tell us what spiritual, I guess we could say, beliefs or spiritual elements we can subscribe to? That's one thing, right? The next thing is that ironically, and I'm going to leave this probably for another episode, but China ironically got involved with the United Nations and was admitted to be an official member in 1971, the same year that the name was changed to Lucis Trust. Could that be a coincidence? A hundred percent it could. I have no evidence to suggest there would be some type of influence there, but we can't rule it out at the same time. Now, the next thing we have to look at from the Lucis Trust is that the Lucis Trust is responsible for maintaining all of the singent satellites of the NSA and the CIA. How the hell is that possible? That's what I want to know. Not only that, but if we take a look, for example, at the spacereview.com, what we're going to find is a myth that they're speaking about. The And the headline is Candy Corn Analyzing the Corona Concrete Crosses Myth. Now, these were crosses that were called Corona. Again, be, take that as you may in terms of the name, right? I'm not going to jump into that. But ironically, just think about what's going on in the world right now. Anyways, according to the spacereview.com, Corona was the program name for a series of photographic intelligence satellites that provided coverage of the Soviet Union, China, and other areas from its first successful flight in 1960 until its retirement in 1972, end quote. The crosses are still there. Why is it that these crosses are still being utilized by these satellites? Now, according to Phil Schneider in his final speech, he had said these crosses are used, yes, to surveil other adversaries in other major countries, right? In a very top secret way. However, they're also used to harness energy in a geopolitical manner that would allow for a certain frequential lead line to allow for the murder from this presidential kill list. 
this ancient kill list that can also ironically be read by quantum computers. And so if you take a step back to an episode I did, I, I believe it was about a month ago or so, I talked about how there's certain energies around the world that the United Nations harnesses in order to carry out certain murders. Now, of course, we cannot prove that directly. It's, it's obviously used through a bunch, of a bunch of different dummy companies and dummy corporations. It's one of the most basic way of doing things, so it never really traces back to them. But we cannot exclude these types of situations because... If the United Nations is utilizing these lead lines to gain leverage of negotiations and influence people in certain parts of the world, which is ironically where they hold certain meetings when lead lines certain when certain lead lines align, the UN holds meetings in that area because the thing about the lead lines is that they're constantly moving every so often, not in a dramatic way, but there's evidence to suggest based on thermal imaging and EMF satellite readings on a public level that there is some type of fluctuation. So why is it that the United Nations meetings before COVID happened, before it went virtual, all occurred around where these lead lines happened to be the strongest, which ironically ended up happening where certain, I guess we could say, excuse me, coincidental murders happen in the same area of these Corona crosses. So all I'm saying is don't tell me these Corona crosses are not being used anymore. Because at the end of the day, a court, the last time it was used, it's retirement in, 19, in 1972. So why would Phil Schneider be talking about it in a speech in 1995? Over 20 years later. That's all I'm saying. Now, interestingly enough, the Lucis Trust is responsible for these satellites. Why the hell would they re be responsible for this? Because the United Nations is the top-down structure of a technocracy that would allow for the overall control of, and I don't want to jump into this too much because I don't want to fear monger, but the, one of the biggest proposals is a top-down one-world government. Now, here's the thing, guys. Before you say, oh, look, look, we're talking about one-world government, da 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 I want you to hear me out, please. It could be good. It could be bad. It, I guess it depends on the perspective. But ultimately, based on my research, it, it depends on the perspective and deception in which spirituality is carried out by the Lucis Trust. So the understanding of frequential lead lines or ley lines that are utilized by these top secret CIA satellites that are then given coordinates and de details that are put in this ancient kill list for presidents to be given and handed down. To then understand that they need to, they don't know why, because the gentleman from the CIA with the right light aquatic clearance give them these books and tell them these people have to be dead within a certain amount of years. Doesn't matter how you do it, but it matters where. And so these Corona cross lines are used as a prime example and a sort of general encompassing, I guess we could say map or GPS to allow for a geopolitical murder to happen in order to further this. Now, I know it sounds confusing, but just bear with me. The next thing we're going to jump to, we're going to jump to express.co.uk. I'm putting it up on the screen right now for you guys on YouTube. What we're going to see here, and I quote, WikiLeaks website founded by Julian Assange in 2006 has published an email received by John Podesta, the chairman of the Mrs. Clinton's presidential campaign from Edgar D. Mitchell. Now, keep in mind, guys, I mentioned Edgar Mitchell many times before. He's someone that has openly said extraterrestrials are among us. But again, the media doesn't cover it one of the Apollo 14 astronauts and the sixth man to walk on the moon in August last year. The email in which Mr. Mitchell and Mr. Podesta appear to be on the first name terms reveals the pair were intended to have a conversation via Skype, apparently about the potential for war breaking out in space. Mr. Mitchell warned his acquaintance, Podesta, that ETI, extraterrestrial intelligence, would not tolerate any forms of military violence on Earth or in space. However, despite their apparent intolerance, he described the ETI as nonviolent, end quote. Probably because these advanced species have so much technology that they can probably disable our technologies within a matter of seconds, if not minutes, right? Now, look, you might say, okay, oh, look, he's going back to the WikiLeaks emails and all that. No, this is a prime example of a deep connection between all of these different things, the presidential book. Now, could it be possible that the whole overarching timeline based on the Lucis Trust was so Hillary Clinton was supposed to become president instead of Donald Trump, and she was supposed to pick up the mantle of this ancient kill list book? Very, very possible. Now, we can't rule anything out here, because at the end of the day, there are far more crazy things that we've discussed on this show, or crazy, as I say, that would honestly make this book seem like a reality now with that being said i do want to mention as well that whether or not you like donald trump and i'm not trying to get political but he did disrupt whether you like him or not i've said this a lot he did disrupt the overall timeline of things did he disrupt the timeline of this ancient kill code book very possibly very very possibly did he follow the orders 
of the Rye Light CIA men that came and gave it to him and said, listen, this is what you got to do, how you got to do it. Maybe he did or maybe he didn't. We don't know. Now, what I want to do here, though, is I want to overall, I want to just cover everything and take a step back so you guys can understand this and break this down. Now, first off, here's what we have. We have Rye Light slash Aquacade clearance. These are the CIA men that come into the new president and say, listen, this is a book. It can be read by quantum computers, but that's none of your business. There's certain people that need to die. They, when it doesn't matter, but where matters. And so if you're going to do it, this is where you got to do it. You're then going to use these Corona concrete crosses as guidance. And that's all you need to know. We're not going to tell you anymore. So if you end up using a legitimate reason on a public front to carry out a murder in a political sense or in a military sense, go for it. But these are the terms. That's number one. Number two is the Lucis Trust. Why is the Lucis Trust running these satellites in partnership with the CIA? Is the Lucis Trust overall controlling many factions of the CIA? Therefore, they're the ones that say, okay, this book should be given to this president and maybe hold off on giving it to this one and so on and so forth. That's number two. Number three is that the WikiLeaks emails between John Podesta and Edgar Mitchell only ramp up even more. And so what we're seeing here is that a lot of politicians, not all of them, but, but a lot of politicians are privy to extraterrestrial intelligence. So we broke that down. The question then becomes, who gave this book and who wrote this book? Who started this book? Well... As I said earlier in the episode, if we understand the mathematical formulas of life, and I'm, that might be an oversimplification or an overgeneralization, but if we understand that a lot of nature can be described through that of math, geometry, and things like this, what we'll understand here is that it's not that hard to predict the future in the sense of important events that will occur. For example, 9-11 might have been one of them, right? This whole COVID thing might have been another one. And so it's very ironic here, all of the pieces, and I'm doing my best to put them together. I know it might sound a little bit confusing, but I want you guys to bear with me here because there's just so much going on out there that it's almost like the distraction and the distortion of everything is there for a very specific reason. And look, maybe I'm not onto anything or maybe I'm onto something very, very deep and very connective, but at the end of the day, I want you guys to take a step back, look at the evidence and decide for yourselves based on what we're seeing here. Because look, this information is out there. And I'm very surprised that this whole Lucis Trust was not spoken about earlier by much larger platforms, but maybe that's because they can't. Anyways, that's it for today. Uh, if you guys are watching this on the day I release it, I hope you have a great Sunday and we will catch you guys tomorrow. Thank you very much.